So now that you know how to solve the uh, quadratic equation, we can go and solve the cubic one. And indeed, the knowledge of how to solve the quadratic equation will be helpful here. So uh, first of all, we will assume that the equation that we, are, that we are given is a monic one, that is the coefficient of the leading power here, which is 3, is 1. Because if it's not 1, it's some non-zero coefficient by which we can divide. Because if the coefficient of this power is 0, then it's not a third-order polynomial equation. It's second-order quadratic equation, which we can handle. So uh, without loss of generality, we, we, we may assume that we're given the equation of this form, that is monic, and here is some coefficient b x squared plus cx plus d equals to zero. So our first goal will be to get rid of this x, q, uh, x cubed here. And the idea would be the following one. Basically, we would consider x plus b over 3 to the power 3. And now note that uh, if we open it up, then uh, it becomes x to the power of 3 plus 3 times uh, uh, b to the power of 3 x squared, just as we wanted. So we have this part here, and some other terms. So it's uh, going to be 3b uh, over 3 squared times x, and plus b over 3 to the power of 3. Now, why am I doing this? Because this expression over here can be replaced by this. So we may write, we may write x plus b over 3 to the power of 3, and then we need to subtract those and to add cx and d. So here we'd have uh, c, and then we would subtract this 3b over 3 uh, times uh, an x here. That's the coefficient of x uh, after we made this replacement. And plus d, and from d we need to subtract this uh, part over here. So that's the same equation, and this equals to zero. And now what I will show that we can make this substitution if we call by y this x plus b over 3, then the, uh, sorry, this is the third power here, of course. So if we substitute uh, by the name of y this, then the equation that we obtain for y is y to the power of 3 plus this coefficient over here, c minus 3, b over 3, and here we would have y minus b over 3, and some constant here. Uh, I'm not going to expand everything here, but clearly the equation that we have to solve for y is of the form y to the power of 3 plus by plus some constant q equals to 0. And therefore, it would suffice to know how to solve equation of this form, because we can take every equation of this form and bring it uh, with this shift to equation of this form. So if we know how to solve this one, we will know how to solve this one. And therefore, we will focus now, suppose we were given the equation x to the power of 3 plus px plus q, we were given this equation to begin with. So it's a bit simpler, but still it's unclear what to do here. Okay, so we got rid of this term, but how do we express um, x here as a function of p and q? And so uh, the brilliant idea of Cardano was is to look for x as the sum of two expressions. And today's, uh, if you look at field theories and Gallius theory, there's actually a reason that uh, uh, we should look for the solution in this form, but that was a lucky guess of Cardano and it worked. And we'll see uh, the brilliance in this substitution. So if we were to take this x and plug it into here, so we have a plus b here, all this to the power of 3, plus b times a plus b, and plus q equals to zero. Now, if we were to open the brackets here, then we would have this a to the power of 3, and of course b to the power of 3. Don't worry, I'm not forgetting. So another term that we have here, that I read this, wrote this way on purpose, it's going to be 3ab times a plus b. So uh, this is, uh, this is, this is it. So this, all of this is this. So if you open the brackets, you can make sure that verify that this is, uh, that I made no mistake, and this is the way to write this. And so we have p times a plus b here, and here we have plus q. Okay, equals to zero. So we've plugged it in, and it seems, well, what have we done? Well, let's do one more step here. So let's write this as 3ab three, uh, three plus p, all of this times a plus b, and here plus a q here, this equals to zero, and here plus a to the power of three, plus b to the power of three. So now remember that we, uh, when we wrote 
x as uh, a plus b, it's actually a sum of two unknowns. So we introduce the redundancy here, right? So we, in order to determine a and b, we actually need two equations. And this degree of freedom allows us to actually simplify matters here. So uh, we're looking for any a and b such that when we plug plug this uh, into the equation together, we will have zero here. So we might as well demand that we need to find a and b such that this is zero or a times b is minus p over 3. And another equation for uh, is that a to the power 3 plus b to the power 3 equals minus q. And so if we manage, if we manage to solve those equations, then and plug it back for x, then this is done. That's x, a, a plus b will be a solution. So that's what we need. Okay, and so we from this equation, we can actually see that uh, if we want to express b, then b is minus p over 3a. Okay, and so we can plug it into here. So let's see what do we have here. So a to the power 3 and uh, plus, uh, or minus, I should say minus here, uh, p to the power of 3 over divided by 27, a to the power of 3 equals minus q. And so now if we were to multiply by a to the power of 3, if we do it naively, then we have a to the power of 6, and here we have uh, plus q a to the power of 3 and minus p to the power of 3 uh, over 27. And this is equal to 0. Yeah, seems to be just just right. And so looking at this, you might say, oh, what have you done? You had a third order equation and you now have an equation of the sixth order. But actually, this is a B quadratic equation. So remember that I said that knowing how to solve the quadratic equation actually will help us here, because this is a quadratic equation for a to the power of 3. So we can write this as a to the power of 3 squared plus q a to the power of 3 minus p uh, to the power of 3 over 27. Uh, this equals to 0. And now we can actually solve for a cubed here. So a cubed would be let us write this using the formula for the quadratic, it's minus q plus minus, and here uh, there's actually the square root of what? Of uh, q squared, and here minus 4, and this is minus, so it's going to be plus 4, and here p over 3 to the power of 3. Isn't that nice? p over 3 to the power of 3. And here we divide this by 2. So now we may separate this and write this as minus q over 2, and here plus minus and here, this 2 can go inside the square root, but it goes as 4. So it's, look, look how nice it is. So it's q over 2 to the power of 2, plus p, and now this 4 gets reduced, plus p over 3 to the power of 3. All right, and this is a cubed. Okay. And now we know that uh, b cubed is actually, uh, we, we need this to be minus q. So this is going to be minus q minus a cubed. So b cubed has to be this minus q over 2, and here, the, basically the opposite sign here. So it's minus plus, and here, you can verify this easily, by the way. So, and here we'll have, again, this nice rhyme, q over 2 to the power of 2, plus p over 3 to the power of 3. Okay, so we've got our a and b, uh, a cubed and b cubed. And uh, so here's the thing. So, indeed here, uh, a cubed plus b cubed is going to be minus q. And so, just to, to count like the number of possibilities or possible combinations, so it's enough actually to fix the sign for a, if we fix the sign plus, then for b it has to be the opposite sign. So, uh, here all the combinations are exhausted. So, it's not four combinations, it's actually uh, the the other ones yield the same result for a uh, cubed plus b cubed and eventually for a and b. So, uh, it, it is enough if we fix uh, a cubed to be uh, minus q over 2 and here plus the square root of, and this is nice, the song again, q over 2 to the power of 2 plus p over 3 to the power of 3. And then we will fix b to be to be minus q over 2, and here minus the square root, and again q over 2 to the power of 2 plus p over 3 to the power of 3. Okay, so here we have our a and b. But now, uh, the thing is, uh, let's be cubed. 
So now we, if we want to find x, then let us write this formula, but it's actually tricky, as we will see. So uh, x would be the cube root of minus q over 2, and here we would have this plus the square root. Look how nice this is. q over 2 to the power of 2 plus p over 3 to the power of 3. And here we have, we need to add this b, so it's the cube root of minus q over 2 and minus the cube root, uh, the square, uh, yeah, the cube root. Uh, q over 2 to the power of 2 plus p over 3 to the power of 3. And here words get tricky again, because, well, you know that when we're taking the, th first of all, we're supposed to have three solutions to the equation. The equation that we're trying to solve, it's x to the power of 3, px plus q equals to 0, and, well, this is uh, the way that Cardano's formula is, u is, is written. That's, that's the formula. We arrived at it. But we know that we're supposed to have three solutions to this equation. And, well, where are they here? Actually, we need to take here the complex root. So when we take the third root, we actually know from, uh, you know, basic properties of complex numbers that uh, there are three complex when we take the third roots uh, about about the complex so there are three roots for for each number whether it's real or complex so we have three possible roots here and three possible roots here and seems that we have nine combinations altogether but that's not the case because we must have that uh, a times b is minus p over three right and we can assume that a and b may B and may as well happen uh, to be complex numbers. So uh, from pro properties of complex numbers, actually the argument of B has to be chosen in such a way that this is just the argument of P over 3, or min minus the P over 3, minus the argument of A. And then for every choice for the argument of A, we have a unique choice for the argument of B so that this holds. And therefore, we have exactly three solutions here. And it can ha it can perfectly happen that this is a complex numbers number. It could be, and still it has three roots. Uh, and then this constraint will lead us to the unique choice of B, so that we always have three roots here uh, that uh, that that are the solutions and other combinations will um, produce the same result. So the distinct uh, not necessarily this thing, but the three roots are are given by when we fix this constraint, then this is the way to choose and get our three solutions. And it could perfectly be that all the roots of these polynomial equations are real and they're written just as a sum of complex numbers. And there's no way of getting around uh, the complex numbers without knowing the uh, the way to extract the root about the complex, we wouldn't have been able to derive and obtain all the solutions. So now if we wish, uh, we would solve an example. And by the way, let me just uh, write something nice here. So if we were to have to write this equation uh, x to the power of 3, and let's write this instead of uh, lowercase p, we'll write lowercase p as 3 times capital P and lowercase q will write as twice capital Q equals to zero, then actually this formula can be written a bit more nicely, in my opinion, although it's just the same. So we can define delta to be uh, Q squared plus P to the power of three, and then the square root of this. And then the solution X that we're looking for is gonna be uh, minus this capital Q plus delta, and here a third root of that, all the three possibilities subjected to this constraint on the argument and the third root of minus q minus delta. Okay, so now let us see an example of how it would work. So let us pick uh, a nice equation here. So for example, say that we have an equation that I prepared especially for you. So it's x to the power of three. And here we would have the uh, minus 3x and minus, say, the square root of 2 equals to 0. And let's write it in our way. So capital P is actually minus 1 and capital Q is uh, minus the square root of 2 over 2. And then we, when we compute it, when we compute uh, Q squared 
plus p to the power of 3. So q squared is 1 half and then minus, uh, minus 1. So it's actually minus 1 half. And so what we are left with, so when we're taking the uh, square root of this, this is just, uh, uh, again, plus, uh, it's just plus minus uh, i here. Uh, so it's going to be the square root of 2 over 2 and times i. So it's easy to verify. And the reason that I chose this equation, uh, because it becomes particularly nice. So what we have here is that uh, for a, we need to take the third root of this square root of 2 over 2. Uh, and here we have square root of 2 over 2 times i. And then for b, we need, uh, let, let us write it underneath, we'll see why. So for b, we need to take the third root of square root uh, of square root of 2 over 2, and uh, here we need just to take the minus of square root of 2 over 2, i. And now we see that uh, this is actually uh, e to the, let's write it this as, well, for those who don't know, so this is the argument that this number is pi quarter, so uh, because let us remind the earliest form, like a sine of phi plus i sine phi, is actually there is a deep meaning, but this is e to the guy phi. Uh, and, and this is like a deep truth, but you know, if you don't know this, then uh, this is a subject for a separate video. But anyway, I can write this, the argument of this is pi quarter, so it's e to the i pi uh, quarter here, and we need to extract the third root here. And here we need to extract the third root of e to the minus i pi quarter here, okay? And by the way, so the minus p equals to 1, and so the argument of minus p is going to be 0, and that's good. So we'll see uh, what's happening here. So now, actually, this this is a multivalued function. So this is actually a list of three possible values. So if we were to write those values here, uh, according to the formula for the cubic roots, then it has three, it's, it's a list of numbers. So it's e, i to pi over 12, and another possibility here, it's e to the i uh, 3 pi over 4. And the, the last one here is e i 17 pi over 12. Uh, this is it. And uh, here we have that this is e to the minus i pi over 12. And here we have e to the uh, i 7 pi over 4, and the last one here that we have, it's e to the i uh, 15 pi over 12. Okay, and so now we have the constraint that a times b actually has to be minus capital P, so it has to be 1 in this case, because it's, uh, it's minus lower, it's minus this p over 3, or it's this minus p, which I said is 1. So the product of a and b must be 1. So clearly, if this is a, then this has to be b. And if this is a, then the matching one, if we extend it, actually it's 9 pi over 12, and when we sum it up, it's uh, when we multiply those, it's 24 pi over 12, which is e to the i 2 pi. It turns out to be 1. So this is paired up with this one and this one is paired up in this one. And so, in this particular case, the solutions that we have when we add those up together, so we have x1 has to be uh, twice the cosine. Here it's obvious uh, that when we add this one and this one, so let us write again from earliest formula that may that deserve a separate video. They're very beautiful, but uh, from earliest formula, we know that uh, cosine of phi is e to i phi plus e to the minus i phi over 2. So here again, this would be x is just the cosine of, in this case, uh, pi over 12. And if you wish, you can check that this is actually 2 or less the square root of 3 and the square root of that. And similarly, x2 is 2 cosine of 3 pi over 4, which is minus the square root of 2. And finally, the last one, x3, is 2 cosine 17 pi over 12, which turns out to be 
minus the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, hope that you will follow to the next one where we show how in principle when we uh, how can we solve the equation of the first order, the quartic equation.